questions up, but I don't, I don't see it happening real soon. Yeah, and maybe a, you said used the word competitively priced, and the, the issue is people aren't competing as far as they're just saying they're not going to offer them at a lower interest rate. So maybe we can say it's not an acceptably priced. Exactly, uh, you're, you're right. For our clients, uh, uh, that you know, I mean, if they've had you know maybe a five or six percent mortgage, and it's a million dollars. Well, now if you're going to go to that same bank, they may be asking eight or nine. Or, exactly, or that's exactly yeah. true, and you're going to pay three, three or four points to get that. Yeah. So Crazy. it's uh, yeah, it's just not uh, conducive for a lot of people to to do that. Now, as I understand it. Um, part of the reason that we, we've got uh, these uh, thresholds, if you will, that we look at, benchmarks that are happening with loans is because basically it's, it has to do with federal insurance. For yeah, the, uh, you, you're, you're right, Mike. Really, right now, uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA are the only ones securitizing mor mortgages. So they're the only ones buying mortgages right right now. And so lenders are uh, is making loans based on, on those guidelines. And so once you get outside those guidelines, they just don't want anything to do with, the, with, with lending because they want to be able to have a, a source to sell those loans to when they make them. Um, they don't want to sit on that. They, they want to recapitalize themselves and, and, and get those loans off the books. So um, right now, uh, if it's not a Fannie Mae loan, it's just really difficult to do. Mm -hmm. And Fannie Mae, Freddie, and FHA for that matter, have been slowly making the box smaller for, mm -hmm. for what, they want to, what they want to lend on. So we're going to see some changes this month where it's going to be more difficult for people to obtain a loan, uh -oh. the the income yeah the income <laughs> guidelines it, are are going to be tougher. So um, I'm looking back this past year, and we have many people that we've worked with, uh, excellent uh, credit, uh, excellent you know j longevity on the job, uh, nice assets. They won't be able to get a loan, even though they qualified. Let's say in July, well we've had a nice interest rate dip. They, can't, they won't be able to get a loan in December and January just because of the new income guidelines. Yeah. It's making it tougher. Yeah, very frustrating. I think another thing, um, well, there's two other things that come to mind as far as some of the changes that have happened uh, uh, that I've seen. So one of them is, again, we talked about this before, the adjustable rate mortgage. So a couple of years ago, I would say... 70 or 80 percent of the mortgages that I was originating was adjustable rate mortgages. And now that's totally flipped and almost yeah. everything is fixed rate. Exactly, yeah. I, I know a couple of years ago you, you saw it, uh, the adjustable rate mortgages w were very prevalent and especially for a purchase of a home. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a there's some good adjustable loans. We, we we still have them. Fannie Mae still offers adjustable loans, and you can get a three year, a five year, a seven year, a ten year, where the the payment and the interest rate is fixed for that period of time, and then it then it adjusts to whatever the the market is. Right. Um, so so they're decent loans. They're they're not bad as long as somebody knows what it is, but very few loans are, are being done now with adjustable rates. It's, it's all fixed rates. And I understand, people want the security of knowing what their payment is going to be. Mm -hmm. They want it fixed, uh, even if you know, they may be only in their house seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, they, still, they still want to be f sure about the future, that here's my payment, it's not going to change, I can sleep at night. So yeah. we're just not seeing very many adjustable rate mortgages right now. Although I will say this, adjustables have taken the place of maybe um, equity lines or even reverse mortgages for, for certain people. Okay. Um, we, we're seeing where maybe a little older clientele where they think, you know what, I'm, I'm in this house now, I'm going to be selling it in the next five years. Why don't I just take a good interest rate and enjoy that and when I sell it, you know, I'll, I'll move on. Okay. So. Now another thing you, you just touched on is the area of seniors and so Again, a couple of years ago, uh, well, again, I'm very fortunate that I have some pretty substantial uh, s senior clients, 
and they had a lot of equity in their homes. And so they would come to me and say, should I be looking at one of these equity lines? I mean, I've got Robert Wagner here that's telling me I should be getting one. And, you know, isn't it a great deal? And uh, actually, when I looked at it, I thought, well, these are very expensive. This is a very expensive form of financing. And uh, again, uh, did some discussion with uh, one of the people at your company, and they agreed with me and uh, said, you know, this is sort of, you know, like the last resort for seniors mm -hmm. in many cases. But now, there's many people are going to have to deal with that last resort that they didn't before. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. A few years ago, um, we could get a, a, a senior client uh, equity lines up to $750,000 on, on their homes, and a lot of times do it at no charge for them. Yes. Uh, so why wouldn't you do it? Um, th then they could ha they had plenty of flexibility. Uh, I know a lot of people use their equity lines. They they you know moved to different parts of the country to Florida, South Carolina. Use that to buy a, a home that they were going to retire in. Uh, you know, really nice product to have. Um, nowadays, just can't do that. We s we still need full income documentation now on an equity line. And for a an older person that might be retired, they don't really need the income. That, so they've got all, the, all their assets tied up in, mm -hmm. you know, in, in their investments and really haven't been drawing an income enough, enough to substantiate a large, a large equity line. So um, we've, we have been able to use the reverse mortgage, like, like you mentioned, it, uh, as a substitute. Uh, they are very expensive. And in the past, we've said, boy, why do you want to spend $20,000 up front for a reverse mortgage? Uh, that's crazy. But today... Uh, that's often the only option available for somebody that has uh, that, that can't substantiate income and meets the qualifications for, for a reverse mortgage, which is over 62. Right. Um, so, so it is an option. It's still very expensive. Th there's many. There, there's f fewer reverse mortgages now than there has been in the past. Really, it's it's only the FHA Heckam mortgage. It's the only one being done right now. Um, B of A had a really nice one, but once again, they can't securitize it, so they've gotten away from that. Uh, so it's really just the FHA reverse mortgage. And that one also, uh, the guidelines are becoming tougher. So Maybe that's why Robert Wagner has started <laughs> advertising some other Yeah, stuff. he's moving on to something yeah, else. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about, we were talking about that there are these little benchmarks uh, so maybe you can help people to understand wh where are these little thresholds as far as uh, the guidelines for the federal insured loans yeah, now? Yeah, on what, on what they're looking for. Yeah, there, there's a number of them, and if you don't meet the best standard, it adds to the cost of the loan. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, unfortunately, but that, that's the way it is. Uh, right now, you've, you've got to go full income documentation. So if you're self-employed, minimum two years taxes, and you'll need a uh, year-to-date uh, P&L that will be, has to be prepared by a financial professional. Uh, really can't get anything done with, without that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're salaried, we're going to need to see current pay stub, W-2s for two years, and typically they'll want to see taxes. Mm -hmm. um, every lender now does what they call, what they call a 4506T. They order a tax transmittal from the IRS just to verify that the taxes that have been used are correct. Mm -hmm. That's standard procedure, every loan, they, mm -hmm. they, do, they do that now. Okay. Um, so you've got to have, have very good income and you've, you've got to have a solid employment uh, base. Now, now, I really what I want to focus a little bit on was the, le the levels. So for example, as I understand, there's a, there's a breaking point at about 417,000. Right, yeah. So